Hello and welcome to Question and Answer Episode 8. Today's question comes from Jean via email. The question is, as a lifter, should you bother with periodization, e.g. GPP, also known as General Physical Preparation Phase, then Hypertrophy Phase, then Strength Phase? If yes, is it something any lifters should pay attention to, or only advanced lifters should worry about? Okay, this is a fairly in-depth topic, and um, what I'm going to cover is I'm just going to cover it from a practical sense. So most of the people that are going to watch this YouTube are probably going to be more worried about weight training in like a, in a like a, as a hobby, um, as a hobby as powerlifter, hobby as weightlifter, hobby as crossfitter, and uh, bodybuilder. It's quite unlikely that the people watching this video are um, competing in Olympic sports and they have annualized training cycles of like an Olympic cycle of four years an annual cycle and four annual cycles within that Olympic cycle it's going to lead towards like a world championship um, a peak at a European, a peak at a world championship etc etc so when you're looking at um, what, what um, there's so many different ways of actually periodizing programs and it's also a topic that's vastly misunderstood within quite a lot of the coaching population so as far as its um, applicability to a uh, hobbyist lifter I wouldn't worry about it so much the, the periodization that most lifters operate under is like a repeated sort of block was like a it's like a block periodization that they run over and over again. So an example of a, of a repeated block periodization would be a 5-3-1 program. So the 5-3-1 is a four-week block. And in that block, there are four what are called mesocycles. So there's a macro cycle, which is a month of training. There's a mesocycle, which is a week of tra training and then a micro cycle which is within the day it's just terminology I wouldn't get caught up in it just you have to call these things something and this is what uh, it comes these term a lot of this terminology comes from like Vershonsky who's taken it from other places but he um, he's attributed with um, popularizing block periodization to a western audience because he um, brought a lot of he um, translated quite a lot of work from Russian into um, in English <clears throat> so as far as like the way you should look at your training as a lifter try to keep it um, try to keep it practical you don't really want to be thinking as a an annualized cycle unless you have a coach who knows what they're doing if you don't have a coach who knows what they're doing then you want to be thinking of like a practicality what's like a four week program I can run over and over again or what's a way of practically putting together my training so another example of like um, a periodized program would be like a Russian squat masters or a Russian squat routine which is a two block training cycle the first blocks volume accumulation at one lift and then it's realization of that accumulation of volume and then you one RM. So it's effectively it's um, two three week cycles or two four week cycles put together in one program. But the two distinct phases of training within that program. Now, as a lifter, you don't really need to know what volume accumulation is. You don't really need to know what vo um, volume realization is or uh, the intensification of that volume and the realization of that volume you've built up. And how that results in a, a greater strength gain at the end of that nine week or six week training phase. All you need to know is that here is a reputable, pr reputable program that's going to produce a 5% gain in my lift if I run it. So you, you could be looking at um, Rush Squat Masters and you can run that every nine weeks, or you can just run, run the volume phase of that as a three week cycle or a four week cycle, get the six sixes workout and just up the weight and rerun it again. And you can use it as a practical tool to kind of periodize and um, 
organize your training in a manner that makes sense. You look at something like, um, and I've just completely blacked out. <laughs> if you look at something like a West Side template, it's not really periodized. It's a, it's a template of training that's ran over and over again. Um, it's kind of a, not disingenuous, but they're kind of selling it as something that's not, it's not, not a periodized block of training. It's just a template that you run over and over again. A periodized program might be something like if you take out like um, a, you take out like a, a book and I, as an example that had like a had a five five cycle phase of training that started off with like you're saying had a GPP phase where you're doing something that is in your sport. Then you come into a hypertrophy phase, then a strength phase, and then a competition phase. Blah blah blah. And I know Dave Tate has. Um, our EFTS have some periodized blocks of training for powerlifting that you can look at, but that's like a five month periodization. If you look at periodization from sport, you're really talking like um, and the minimum is an annual cycle, and it's probably, if it's done properly, it's going to be like a four year cycle where we have a definitive aim. On the fourth year, the first year we're trying to achieve this, second year we're trying to build on that and achieve this, third year we're building on that, we're achieving this, fourth, we're kind of hitting our potential over the last three years, and this fourth year is just like a, it's icing on the cake, and we're going to bring it to, like if it's rugby, be the rugby World Cup, football, be the football World Cup, and sports are different though, professional, different dynamic, but within a non-professional Olympic sport, the aim for that sport and what's going to determine the success of that sport within most Western funding structures is going to be your success at the Olympic Games. So if you're British cycling and you want to get more funding, you need more medals at the Olympic Games. So you need to build on, so your last four year cycle produced these results with these athletes, with the same athletes you can build on those four years, create a new four year cycle and try to do better than you did last year. Um, but if you're a new coach with a new sport, it's a learning process, and the longer you're in that sport, the more you're going to develop a periodization schedule within the time frames that are going to work within that sport that's going to work for your athletes and your team. Um, if within a professional sport, you're going season to season, shop and change, every weekend's a competition, so you can't necessarily periodize in that kind of classical sense. It doesn't really make much sense if you're competing every week so if you got a game every week, you can't do like a hypertrophy phase, you can't do a GPP phase, you can, but you're, you, you're, you're delaying fitness doing that kind of training. You need to be ready to peak pretty much every week or you need to keep in as good a condition as possible. So the traditional periodization that you would have in an athletics or a throwing program that would involve like a four year cycle and within the year cycle, there's areas of detraining there's areas of just getting back to training. That's where GPP comes in from a um, detraining phase into just general physical preparedness, getting ready to train. In the hypertrophy phase, or uh, if for sprinting, you might go into like a, a max strength phase where you're doing acceleration work. And then when you come into the next phase, the strength work goes to maintenance, and then your max strength or your max speed work. And that's what you do for the rest of. Um, your uh, block until you come up to the, your first peak and then the next peak you do something different for the next peak you do something different in terms of lifting as a hobbyist um, mm. you don't really until you get to say uh, it's all arbitrary it depends on your training history but let's say you've trained natural um, you now are you now been training and competing for eight nine years and you know realistically your level you know realistically the competitions that you want to peak for, the competitions you want to hit. So you know uh, you're going to win your regional no problem. You know you have a pretty good chance of, region, of winning your national uh, meet. And then you got Europeans or Worlds and you want to be as competitive as possible for that. You're not going to bother with the, the regional meet. You'll go in, maybe look to make a target total. Then for the your national meet, 
you might go and your training might be geared towards making a bigger total, a total you know is competitive at that, at that level, and you have it within yourself to, to raise your game if you have to, to win that competition to, to, um, to qualify. But then when you've qualified for your Europeans or your World Championships, and this is where maybe you're you want to maybe you came tenth last year and you want to raise up your places to eighth or seventh, and you need a better performance than you did last year. Well, that's when you might start starting to realize some of the training from before. Maybe you've been doing a lot of technique work over the last six seven months on squat because that's your weak lift. You've done a lot of volume, a lot of accumulation, and you've been building and building and building, and now you're you're, you're like doing say you're doing three threes three times a week with like 95% of your of your best from the last year's comp so now right I know I need to hit um, 270 to be to be competitive in this um, in this class so now I've got a, a 10 week peaking phase or 10 week peaking cycle I know if I hit these workouts in this time frame then injury aside illness aside um, like family stress or life stress aside, I know if I do these workouts, then on that day, I'm going to make weight and have a good chance, if not pretty much a certainty of hitting that weight. So within powerlifting or weightlifting, there might be some scope for periodization within a lifter's program, but it's not in a traditional kind of sense, like going from a general physical preparation phase for powerlifting doesn't necessarily make much sense because there's, n there's no real parts of it. It's not like a season. Like you don't do a preseason and then you're in and then you get a mandatory four weeks break. Unless something I think a lot of lifters should maybe look at. Build breaks into your training. Like have deep training into your, into your, um, your annual plan. If you have an annual plan, which most lifters don't. Um, you should look to take like two weeks here where you don't lift. A week here where you don't lift. A week here where you don't lift. Just for recuperation and mental um, recuperation, physical recuperation, regeneration, so that you're hitting, you might lose, you might go sideways for six weeks, but it might stop you getting injured, which might bring you sideways for a year. In my case, it brought me sideways for the best part of seven, eight months. Whereas if I had, I haven't had a week off from training up to that point for probably about seven, eight years, and then I got eight months off lower body lifting because I got a lower body injury. So these are, these are things that with a good coach will take care of. As your own coach, as most lifters are, you need to um, you need to think about these things in a practical sense. If you're training for four hours a week, the need for four weeks off is debatable. If you're training ten hours a week and you're lifting at an elite level, or you're lifting close, if not at your genetic potential, and something you might want to look at might be periods of detraining, periods of um, shifts in focus. Um, but I think it's better to think of it as like a you're trying to build on last month's training as a practical sense. So your periodization should really rely around um, maybe a period of tens or a period of uh, muscle accumulation because that's the end, end of the day it's going to help. So when you're not competing so much, maybe you should look at um, a period of muscle building, working on weak points and lifts. So if you know bench press is an example that uh, lockouts where you're weak, then hammer the show your triceps for two, three months. Work on, your, uh, work on your front squat, work on your sumo deadlift, work on things you wouldn't necessarily work on. One, to shift the focus on training, and two, to work on muscles within your body that don't necessarily get attention that are synergists they're not necessarily moving but they're helping so in like a bench press triceps lats they aren't primary movers well triceps are primary movers at the top but throughout the lifts the main movers like the chest um, the triceps so for a bench press like shoulders lats although you train them all the time you're not focusing on them maybe you should focus on them for a couple of months just to like get a little to build up for your next um, phase of training and um, in your squat maybe you don't do a lot of specific lower back work for a time maybe that's something you should think of when you're training and um, in your deadlift maybe your adductors aren't as strong as they need to be or for your squat maybe your adductors aren't strong enough as they need to be out of the bottom maybe some sumo deadlift might help with that 
Um, that part of um, your training is a bit of a dark art. The, the bit of training where is if you do this period of work at these percentages and then like you follow a systematic three week, four week phase, that's not a dark art. If you do the squat or bench press in a repeatable cycle like a 531 or you do a Russian squat routine, loading cycle, you do um, Ed Cohen, Philippi, Delif routine, you make the workouts, you know you, there, at the other end you're going to get the benefits on that specific movement. But like you need to be thinking about, it's probably <laughs> rambling too much. Uh, you probably need to wrap up fairly shortly. Uh, you need to think of it not as like an annual cycle, um, not as a quad annual cycle. If you're your own coach, you need to think of it as a practical measure. You need to be your training needs to build on itself month to month. So, so if you're using five three one, then you're just following the loading patterns and. You're gradually you're, you're following a slow gradual process of um, increasing training loads not going after one hour ends not constantly trying to um, lift as as you can if you're doing Russian squat routine volume accumulation um, three weeks at a time you're really just constantly you're starting really so maximal and you're just working on your technique and um, trying to feel yourself through the movement try to get efficient and then over time 12 weeks time you're going to be using loads that you know, their personal best and, and a long enough time frame following the same loading pattern if you're going up and up and up, eventually it's gonna stall out, and you're gonna need to change something. But um as a as a general advice for most lifters, you just need to find a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine week cycle of training that works for you or works for a lift in that time period and just ride it into the ground till it's done. When it's done, jump on to something else. So you might have three or four loading cycles that you know in a four week time frame it's going to get you x gain and you can ride it 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 and it stops and you can flip the b ride b till it stops ride c till it stops so on and so forth maybe you have four cycles you just go over and over again um or maybe you artificially change the focus of your training every three four months just to stop that you run into the ground take some gains take some gains from your training for the last four months and change the focus Get some gains there, come back to the real focus, whether it's for weightlifting, snatch, clean and jerk, for strongman, like there's a bit of a season in strongman, but you can maybe look at your events more in the season, out of season, you can be looking at um, your strength, your cardiovascular fitness, your anaerobic fitness, in powerlifting, you can be looking for a defined period of like three months or four months, or five months, looking at squat, looking at bench, looking at deadlift, if you're a geared lifter, you can be looking at your geared lifting, so... You can look at your single ply lifting, your multi ply lifting, your wraps, whatever it is you use. Look at that for a period. But it's nice to have one month, two months, just if you're a gear lifter, say, you come out of the gear, you do your raw work for eight weeks, 12 weeks, build that up, go back into the gear. Just change focus every now and again. Maybe if you're a raw lifter, maybe for a period of four or five months, maybe start using gear. Maybe you start like getting the bench shirts, get in the squat suits, get in the deadlift suits, um, use that as a, a different chain of stimulus. It'll work, it'll work different parts of the movement, it'll work different parts of um, different musculature, it'll maybe show you different techniques, open your eyes to some different things. Um, maybe you do weightlifting for three months, something different, mental change. Maybe you go and play rugby for six months, do powerlifting for six months. Whatever works for you and your um, whatever works for you and your hobbies, that's what you should focus on. Forget about periodization as a topic. Unless you're going to be a coach and actually study it, likelihood is you're not going to understand it to a sufficient degree that you're going to be able to utilize it. Because there's a lot of coaches that don't know it inside out and can't utilize it themselves. So the chances of a lay person doing it is going to require a lot of study, a lot of work. And the benefit you're going to get out of that, outside of becoming a professional, uh, <laughs> it's probably not worth the effort, to be honest. Maybe an extra 2-3% of your lifting, probably not worth it. Uh, okay, so probably a little bit rambly. Um, hopefully you've answered your question, maybe a little bit of insight. Um, not so to the point, <laughs> like I said before, you're not going to get cookie cutter answers on this YouTube. I'm just going to give it to you. 
how, how I think um, or how I actually fit or give you the information that I think is going to benefit you best in the long run. Um, okay, so the honest discussion down below, please. Um, questions, send them in to speedpowerperformance, gmail.com, like Jean did. Um, sign on to the forums, ask them there if you want, keep a log, castironstrength.com forward slash forums, or leave them in the comment section. And if you liked what you've seen, like and subscribe. If not, dislike, <laughs> do what you want. Uh, this is Mark, castironstrength.com, signing off. Till next time, thanks and bye.